And this morning's Health Watch, Healing Hearts. This morning, researchers are reporting what could be a major breakthrough. Cardiac stem cells can repair damage from a heart attack. Correspondent Bill Whitaker reports on one man whose life has been changed by the new promising treatment. So, Ken, how are you feeling? I feel fantastic. When we first met Ken Millis two years ago, he had suffered a serious heart attack. At age 39, 30% of his heart was damaged. He faced a shortened life with shortness of breath and restricted exertion. If someone's had a heart attack and they um, have seen part of their heart turn into scar, that is irreversible. It's there for life. So uh, Dr. Eduardo Marban, director tissue. of the Cedar sinai Heart Institute in Los Angeles, convinced Ken Millis to be patient number one in a risky first-of-a-kind clinical trial. Dr. Marban used a catheter with tiny pincers to snip bits of healthy tissue from Millis's heart. In a laboratory, he coaxed the tissue into manufacturing millions of stem cells, which were then deposited in the damaged area of the heart. Millis was one of 25 trial subjects, and the results are now in. The subjects who received cells had a dramatically better response than the control subjects. All the stem cell recipients had stronger heartbeats, and their heart attack scars were reduced, on average, by almost 50%. Damaged muscle was replaced by new healthy heart tissue. Ken Millis had better than 50% improvement. It's the very first time in my experience that we've actually exceeded our expectations when we do a human trial. Doctors say Ken Millis's heart looks almost normal again. It's like someone gave me a magic pill. I felt better all over, suddenly. You know, it's science fiction, basically, to me. That's what it feels like. These are just the first results of a unique study Results cardiologists find promising. Bill Whitaker, CBS News, Los Angeles. And here with us now, Dr. Holly Phillips. Always nice to see you. Great to so give us an idea, because it sounds promising, of course. Mm -hmm. How could this treatment actually uh, revolutionize the treatment for heart failure? Well, you know, Erica, it can make a dramatic difference because we've never before thought of heart disease as a curable or as a reversible condition. The treatment has always just focused on minimizing symptoms and making living with heart disease better. This completely changes the landscape of how we think about the illness. The other thing is, this is the first time cells from the heart have been used to treat the heart. Before, we've attempted to treat the heart with stem cells from bone marrow, but this is the first time they actually come from the organ. And so that gives us hope for possible other organs. Maybe we can use cells from the kidney to treat the kidney or cells from the liver to treat the liver and so forth. So we're looking at about 6 million people in the country that have heart failure. Um, what exactly puts you at risk for this? By far, the most common risk factors are coronary artery, artery disease, you know, really heart disease, and heart attack. That causes the vast majority of heart failure uh, symptoms. Also, high blood pressure, diabetes, and even sleep apnea mm. can contribute. So there are a number of factors that can cause heart failure. But once you have it, it is a very serious illness. One in five people who are diagnosed with heart failure die within a year of diagnosis. Really quickly, I have about 15 seconds. If you, if you have been diagnosed with that, how can you keep the condition from worsening? Uh, there are many ways, but probably the single most important thing, if you only do one thing, it's to quit smoking. Mm -hmm. Smoking raises your blood pressure and make your, makes your heart beat faster. Both of, things, both of those things stress your heart and can make heart failure symptoms much worse. So that's the one thing you have to do. All right, Dr. Holly Phillips, thank you. Thanks. Good to see you as always.